Hi everyone, welcome back. So now that in the previous session, we understood the relationship between head office and branch versus holding and subsidiary or parent and subsidiary, let's actually look at the key differences between head office branch and holding subsidiary. Now let's take an example. Let us say there is a company called P Limited. I would often denote the parent company or holding company as P Limited or H Limited and the subsidiary as S Limited. So let us take a case where P Limited is owning only 80% of S Limited. In the previous session, we actually took a case where the parent was holding the entire 100% of the subsidiary. Here, I have created an instance where the parent is owning only 80% of the subsidiary and the remaining 20% is say being held by retail investors. All right, obviously not, not I mean, a company need not necessarily have only one shareholder. It can obviously have multiple shareholders. And the scenario that I have taken over here is that the parent is owning 80% and the other retail investors together are holding 20%. Now, this parent limited would also have its own shareholders, also have that in the mind. The parent company is also going to have its own shareholders. For a parent to actually have control over the subsidiary, it's not necessary that it, nece it should hold 100%. If the parent is holding anything greater than 50%, anything greater than 50%, parent limited will always have a control over its subsidiary because it has got the majority voting power. It can take decisions based on the voting power given the fact that it has got voting power of greater than 50%. The fact that it has got majority voting power is going to ensure that it controls the decisions of the subsidiary and therefore we are going to say that the parent in this case also controls the subsidiary because the parent is owning 80 percentage which is greater than 50 percentage now the question is how will i actually consolidate in this case before we actually see the consolidation i want to introduce the balance sheets of p limited and s limited i would like to show you the balance sheet of p limited and s limited firstly p limited let us say it has got a property plant and equipment of 10 lakhs. It's got an investment in S limited of 8 lakhs. All right. Let us say the S limited has got 1 lakh shares of face value rupees 10 each. So if S limited has got 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each, it means that P limited is owning 80,000 shares. All right. It's owning 80%, which means it is having 80,000 shares and other investors together are owning 20,000 shares. So in P limited's balance sheet, you're going to see 80,000 multiplied by 10 rupees. That is the investment that you're going to see. 80,000 multiplied by 10 rupees is going to be 8 lakhs. The share capital of five lakh, uh, the share capital of P Limited is assumed to be five lakhs. What is this five lakhs? This is the five lakhs that these shareholders have actually contributed to P Limited. All right, the five lakhs is these shareholders have contributed five lakhs money into P Limited, and it has got a borrowings of let's say thirteen lakhs. The balance sheet is tallying with the total assets and total equity and liabilities of 18 lakhs. All right, so assets worth 10 lakhs, uh, PP worth 10 lakhs, investment worth 8 lakhs, share capital 5 lakhs and borrowings of 13 lakhs. Similarly, S Limited, I've taken S Limited to have a simple balance sheet again. Let us say S Limited is having share capital of 10 lakhs because we assume that X Limited is having 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each. So share capital is 10 lakhs, which is 1 lakh multiplied by 10. It's got borrowings of 2 lakhs and property plant and equipment of 12 lakhs. All right. So again, a very simple balance sheet of S Limited. I'm intentionally not including too many assets and liabilities so that it's easy for us to comprehend. Now, I have got two options. All right. Now, given the fact that P Limited controls S Limited, P Limited needs to prepare consolidated financial statements. I have got two options. Option number one, I am owning 80% of S limited. All right. I as P limited, I'm owning 80% of S limited. We know that I have to combine the assets and liabilities of S limited into my balance sheet. I being P limited, I have to combine the assets and liabilities of S limited into my balance sheet and I have to prepare a consolidated balance sheet. Option number one is I consolidate 80% of the assets of 
uh, S Limited and 80% of the liabilities of S Limited. I am saying since I own only 80%, I will only uh, consolidate 80% of the assets of S Limited. I will consolidate 80% of the liabilities of S Limited and I will prepare consolidated balance sheet. What is the notional entry that, uh, that, that are going to be passed in P Limited? I am going to say, I'm going to bring in the PPE of S Limited. All right, I'm going to bring in the PPE. The PPE was actually worth 12 lakhs, but I am going to bring in the PPE worth only 80%, which is 9.6 lakhs. All right, instead of consolidating the entire 12 lakhs, I am only going to consolidate 9.6 lakhs, which is the PPE that is attributable to my 80% share. Similarly, the borrowings, I will not consolidate the entire 2 lakhs of borrowings. I am only going to consolidate 80% of it, which happens to be 1.6 lakhs. All right, so I'm bringing in PP worth 9.6. I'm bringing in borrowings worth 1.6. And I de-recognize I de the investment. I had an investment, the P Limited had an investment in S Limited of 8 lakhs. I am de-recognizing that 8 lakh rupees. And obviously this journal is tallying, all right? And if I prepare a consolidated balance sheet to my PP, I'm going to add 9.6. To my borrowings, I'm going to add 1.6. My share capital will remain as it is and I will not have any investment in S Limited in the consolidated financial statements. That is option number one. What is the second option? The second option is I will consolidate the entire 12 lakhs. All right. Although I own only 80 percentage, I am bringing in the entire 12 lakhs. So I will recognize a PPE of 12 lakhs, which is the 100 percentage of PPE in S Limited. I will also recognize the entire borrowings, which is 2 lakhs, all right, P limited, S limited had a borrowings of 2 lakhs. I am going to recognize the entire borrowings and consolidate it into my financial statements. I will de-recognize the investment that I had. The parent limited had an investment of 8 lakhs in a subsidiary. I will de-recognize that investment because I'm bringing in the underlying assets and liabilities. I'm removing or de-recognizing the investment in S limited of 8 lakhs. If you actually just stop at this entry, this entry is not going to tally. I have got a debit of 12 lakhs and I've got a credit of 10 lakhs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another credit called as minority interest or non-controlling interest of 2 lakh rupees. So why, what is this minority or non-controlling interest? What does it actually mean? What we are trying to say is, I as a parent, although I have 80% of uh, ownership, I have the right to control 100% of the assets, all right? It is, although I own only 80% of the equity shares, my decisions are taken with regard to the entire business of S Limited, which means my decisions can affect the entire 100% of the assets and liabilities of S Limited. So I own only 80%, but I control 100% of the assets and liabilities of S Limited. Therefore, I am going to consolidate all the assets and all the liabilities. I'm not going to consolidate only 80%. I will consolidate 100%, but a portion of that is not belonging to me. A portion of those net assets do not belong to me. The net assets of the subsidiary, if you're able to see, is 10 lakhs. The subsidiary had assets worth 12 lakhs. It had external liabilities worth 2 lakhs. So the net assets is 10 lakhs. A portion of those net assets do not belong to me. And for that, I am creating a credit. I am recognizing a credit of 2 lakhs, trying to imply that I have the subsidy has got net assets of 10 lakhs, which are controlled by the parent, but do not uh, are not owned by the parent. They are controlled by the parent, but they are not owned by the parent. And the 10, 20 percentage 20 percentage of the 10 lakhs is what we are getting as 2 lakhs. All right. So the meaning of minority interest or non-controlling interest is nothing but that portion of net assets which are controlled but not owned by the parent. All right. They are not owned by the parent. So I'm, I'm including 100 percentage, but I'm showing a credit towards minority or non-controlling interest. All right. This is nothing but the 20 percent share in net assets of S Limited. 
So I have shown you two options. Option number one is where I consolidate only 80% of my assets and 80% of my liabilities. In that case, you do not have any minority interest or non-controlling interest. Option number two is I am consolidating 100%, but I am also recognizing a minority or a non-controlling interest because I do not own those 100% of assets. 20% belongs to someone else and therefore I'm creating a credit against them. And as if I'm showing a liability towards them. I'm, I'm including 10 lakhs into or 10 lakhs of net assets into my balance sheet, but I'm also including some liability saying that a portion of it is not owned by me. That is referred to as minority or non-controlling interest. Minority, if you look at the words also, minority because they are a minority group of shareholders. I am the majority shareholder. They are a minority shareholder or they are the non-controlling shareholders. I am the shareholder who's got the control. They are the non-controlling shareholders and, and I'm basically creating a credit towards them. Now, which option are we supposed to follow? Are we supposed to follow option one or are we supposed to follow option number two? The answer is we are supposed to follow option number two. I've actually given away the reason earlier itself. I, as a parent, I might own only 80%, but I control 100% of the assets and liabilities. Since I control 100% of the assets and liabilities, I am required to bring in all the assets and all the liabilities, irrespective of my ownership. And I, but I will recognize a corresponding credit towards minority interest or a non controlling interest, stating that a portion of those assets do not actually belong to me, they belong to minority shareholders. So we are, the accounting standards require us to follow option number two. Option number one was only for me to communicate it to you, but that is not allowed as per accounting standards. So how will the consolidated balance sheet of P Limited look like? P Limited will have a property plant and equipment of 22 lakhs. It had a standalone property plant and equipment of 10 lakhs. The subsidiary has got property plant and equipment of 12 lakhs. So I am consolidating 100% and I will show a PPE of 22 lakhs. I will no longer show investment in S limited. The investment in S limited of 8 lakhs is going to be de-recognized because instead of that investment only, I brought in the underlying assets and liabilities of the subsidiary limited. On the liability side, borrowings will be 15 lakhs because the parent had borrowings of 13 lakhs. The subsidiary had borrowings of 2 lakh rupees. All right. I The subsidiary had borrowings of 2 lakh rupees and I'm consolidating 100% of it. And therefore, my borrowings will be 15 lakhs. Share capital is 5 lakhs. This is the share capital that is contributed by P limited shareholders. All right. In the initial diagram to the left, we had initial set of shareholders who contributed money into P limited. That will continue to be as it is. All right. Because that is the share capital that P limited received from its shareholders. All right. So that will continue to be five lakhs. We are going to have a minority interest or a non controlling interest of two lakh rupees. What does this two lakh represent? The, in this consolidated balance sheet, if you carefully look, we have consolidated assets of subsidiary of 12 lakhs and liabilities of subsidiary of 2 lakhs. So we have consolidated net assets of subsidiary of 10 lakhs. A portion of those 10 lakhs, which is 20 percentage, does not belong to me. It belongs to someone else. Therefore, I'm creating a credit towards them calling them as minority interest or non-controlling interest, all right? And this two lakhs can is uh, rightly interpreted as S Limited's net assets multiplied by 20%, which is actually equal to two lakhs. And this is how consolidated balance sheet is actually prepared. We consolidate 100% of the assets and liabilities, but a portion of it does not belong to us. And therefore, we show a corresponding credit of minority or non-controlling interest. In the Indian context, because you do not have an obligation to pay, you do not really have an obligation to pay money to minority shareholders or non-controlling interest. They're clubbed along with equity. They're not shown as a liability, but they're clubbed along with equity section, but that's more a presentational aspect, all right? What I wanted to drive home in this lecture is, unlike head office and branch, in case of a head office, what head office is actually showing as an investment in branch is always going to be equal to what the branch is showing as capital received. All right, whatever head office is showing as investment, branch will always have an equal and opposite amount in the form of capital. But over here, what I showed is 
the I, the investment that i have is only 8 lakhs the subsidiary is having a share capital of 10 lakhs which means along with me there are other groups of shareholders also who are actually invested in that subsidiary all right so therefore in such a case what do we do is what we have actually dealt in this lecture and the answer is we recognize 100% uh, of the assets and 100% of the liabilities with a corresponding credit to minority or non controlling interest all right that's it for this lecture guys thank you so much. Bye-bye.